All right, welcome back. For those of you returning to the channel in particular, I'm uh, playing around with Brea. I haven't actually played a lot of Magic. I will show you in a moment how little I've played lately. So do not take this deck as the be-all, end-all, or anything that's been tested. This is actually a test deck, but I thought I'd share it with you mainly because I have an amazing game to share with you and uh, also because, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of get something on the channel that, you know, maybe provoke some discussion about what I've been doing with um, where I see Commander. I, right now, I, I don't really like it that much, but it feels like there are so many of these Hall Breacher effects that uh, Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister are now the sort of premier kill cards in Commander to go along with the uh, older Winter Orb uh, Mind Twist combo. So you, previously, these were like sort of the two kill cards for control. And now you actually have these two cards as kill cards and it's really strange to say that but the reason of course is uh the notion thief hall breacher narset um the uh, number of these effects have come out and uh as it turns out there was one additional one that was available in white which i wasn't aware of and made me want to actually try it out in brea which is this alms collector this one's the weakest one of them all but it's still strong enough to get the job done and basically it doesn't affect cards like ponder because it doesn't affect your opponent unless they draw cards in batches of two or more. But if they were to try to draw in a batch of two or more, for example, if they were to cast a Brainstorm, uh, then Alms Collector would um, suppress it down to a single card, and then I, as their opponent, would draw the second card. Or if they were to draw, like, let's say, let's say instead of Brainstorm, let's just say that the card was uh, Ancestral Recall, they would draw you know, if, if it was legal, right, they would draw one card from the Ancestral Recall, and then I would draw one card. So what happens when I play a Time Twister with Alms Collector out is that they draw exactly one card because it it's a batch of more than one. So it's a batch of seven. So it suppresses that, converts it into a single draw for them, a single draw for me, and of course I'm unaffected by the Time Twister, so I get seven cards for the Twister, one for the Alms Collector. So I get a total of eight my opponent gets exactly one. So while it's not as good as like drawing 14 and giving them zero or, or you know, getting seven treasure counters and giving them zero cards, basically it's, you know, they're still going to get a card out of it. Um, it's still pretty darn good. It's certainly enough to win to win the vast majority of any games that you're going to be playing. And uh, and Brea gets to play with one more than the uh, Kess deck, so I thought I'd give it a try. There are a couple of other things that made um, Brea interesting. Uh, one of them is the printing of Fracture, which is just an upgraded disenchant, destroy target artifact enchantment, or Planeswalker. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, and also, I wanted to try out uh, Lavinia. So Lavinia um, prevents your opponent from playing spells uh, without paying mana for them, and it also prevents them from playing non-creature spells whose casting costs are greater than the number of lands that they control. Um, so the, the clause against playing free spells is great because right now you've got Force of Will and you've got all these other yucky Fierce Guardianship, Deflecting Swat, Force of Negation, Force of Will. There's a lot of free spells now. Lavinia will just prevent them from playing all of them. They can't play a Mana Crypt and like go off, that kind of stuff. Uh, Lavinia also stops, though. Um, basically, Lavinia, my thinking behind Lavinia, while I like the things I just mentioned, is primarily that the workaround for Winter Orb, like uh, the workaround for, for let me put it this way, the workaround for Lavinia is that you got to get a lot of lands into play. The punish for putting a lot of lands into play is Winter Orb. So the workaround for Winter Orb is playing a land light deck with lots of artifact mana, and the punish for that is Lavinia. So they actually work really well together. It's also a blue card you can force with. It's a human for your Cavern of Souls. So it's got some some interesting properties to it, and you can muddle for it. Now, in the game we're about to play, I don't think I had Lavinia in here. I think I had, like, one more cheat the winner orb effect. I had, like, Opposition or Urza or something. It uh, doesn't matter. It, it doesn't come up, but um, I'll mention it because... Well, it slightly matters because it actually would have been a really good target for me at one point with my tutor, although, you'll, as you'll see, I end up picking a... Uh, I end up... Uh, the card I tutor for ends the game anyway uh, when it finally happens, but... Um, there are a few other things going on here. Uh, without getting too deep into the weeds, basically, 
Um, we're not running Necro because of the Wheel of Fortune Time Twister combo, or I'm, I'm not running it. So that improves my mana base a little bit. And since I have four cards that combo with it, I get to run Cephalid Coliseum over the previous Urborg that was mandatory to run the Necropotence. So that's changed. I'm also not running the um, Stoneforge package. Uh, it just feels a little too fair in the current version of Commander. Like, uh, it's a slow methodical thing that you're going to be doing and uh generally speaking like you don't need to be slow and methodical you need to be sort of um i mean you, you can play that way with a deck like this but you kind of like you're kind of like getting small card advantage over time is not really where you want to be it's more like a big burst of card advantage it ends a game those cards are still super good the stoneforge package was uh, Skull Clamp, which you know is amazing with Brea and of course with um, with the Ready, uh, but uh, Skull Clamp, Umazo is just a, a Sword of Feast and Famine, which cheats the Orb very effectively, and then Stoneforge itself, um, all great stuff. Uh, Jitte being less important now and more important previously because of Necropotence being in the deck. You needed a way to gain life on top of the life that you get off of Brea. You just really needed a way to kind of make sure that you didn't um, necro lock yourself and jitte is the perfect card for that because it it also uh, controls the board to prevent you from taking lots of damage in the first place um but with those with those cards out of the deck you know it made room for all this other stuff and uh i thought i'd run you through uh what a uh, crazy game looks like so as you'll see i uh <clears throat> in the last 30 days i haven't played much magic you can see i here on 410, I, I played like two games and then just can't remember what happened here. And I was just, I just wasn't feeling it at all. And I, I don't even remember what deck I was playing because I wasn't playing Brea. But anyway, here it is, 5-3 and uh, just barely played. So I want to just kind of touch on that, that. I'm not saying that this is the best deck at all. What I am saying, I have no idea how good this deck is because I'm a little bit, as you can see, like I haven't played enough lately to provide any recommendations to you other than the fact that it is fun to play and you may enjoy it. You might like to give it a try and see how you feel about it. Uh, but basically, um, I'm getting ready to uh, move in real life. I, uh, I, uh, it's a big move. And uh, so I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm moving out of the continental U S and so um, I'm kind of dealing with all of the, uh, the craziness that goes along with that. So you haven't seen videos from me lately. That's mainly why. And I just wanted to kind of apologize for that. But um, it is a kind of where I am. Anyway, this one hopefully will make up a little bit of the wait for you by providing a really interesting one. Um, this last game in particular is the one that I wanted to fo focus on. So I'm playing against King KRL Pawn. King Kroll Pawn? I'm not quite sure what that stands for. But... Um, I'm going to pause. Okay. Uh, well, let's try that again because this is important. So I'm going to pause on my opening hand and then so uh, and then we'll, we'll cover what came, what my opponent's um, playing. So let's just go to the next step. Will that do it? Next step. Let's see if I can get the cards in my hand without having them disappear. Okay. So here's my opening hand and it's, it's like a tundra away from being um, an insane start right like if it ha if i had a tundra in here instead of i don't know treachery or something you know you land tundra vault or or wasteland vault second turn land flash out the arms collector alms collector if i draw a land land time twister boom win the game but uh don't have that tundra and that's of course that would have required me to draw an extra mana source at any rate uh this is too risky of a keep so i decided to mulligan so i mulligan into uh a hand with basically no lands Another hand with no lands, uh, another hand with no lands, essentially, and uh, finally this hand. And so I have just mulliganed to three, and I'm deciding how do I keep this. So I'll give you a moment. Now, my opponent's uh, playing uh, Joyra the Gitu, so uh, potentially, you know, counter magic over here, card advantage, you know, disruption, who knows what. Anyway, um, so I'd like to give you a moment to decide how you would keep a hand like that, and then I'll show you what I chose to do. And here's the thought I had. <clears throat> I figured the only way I can possibly win this game, remember I'm going to three cards, 
if I if I was going to four cards, I might keep city, tutor, map, crucible. So I'd go city of brass, eat and enlightened tutor for um, uh, mana crypt. Next turn, play the crypt, cast the map, sack it, go get strip mine, strip mine my opponent, and then the turn after that, play crucible, replay the strip mine. So with a four card hand, one, two, three, four, I would keep those four cards and hope that that was good enough to get me there. But I'm not keeping four. I have to mulligan to three. So I decide I have to keep Enlightened Tutor in the City of Brass because I've got to get Mana Crypt. And the only card that possibly digs me out of this losing position at that point is Hall Breacher. So I decide I'm going to keep City, Tutor, Breacher, and then just hope I find a Time Twister effect. So here we go. I am at least going second. I don't find a Time Twister, but I do find a way to get one possibly. So opponent Mysticals right away and goes and gets Time Stretch. So this phone is a little bit meme -y. But, uh, you know, with Joyra, um, if I don't get something done pretty soon, like obviously once stuff like that starts resolving, the uh, the game just ends. All right, so we get the Crypt. So I decide that I'm going to go ahead and just cast the Spellseeker now while I can. And I, I really wanted to be greedy here. I really wanted to get Vampiric and then try like a, or Demonic and then try like a, two or three turns set up, but I decide I'm going to play it somewhat safe and just get Tithe to get a couple cards back into my hand. Um, and then maybe I can find, that way if I find, you know, if my opponent, I don't know, maybe they destroy my Crypt or something, then I might just have a chance to get in the game. Well, I do. I top deck Dark Confidant, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here I probably was a little greedy getting the Trium, but it, it, it ends up not punishing me. Anyway, my opponent gets Joyra down, decides not to trade with the Confidant. And I hit, um, so I have a Hall Breacher and a Notion Thief, both of which are hidden from my opponent. They're hidden information because they only they only saw the Tundra that I found. So my opponent starts putting away um, Jingitoxis and uh, has his time stretch. Um, Jingitoxis is hilarious. So it, my maximum hand size would be reduced to seven uh, by seven, which means I'd have, at the end of my turn, I'd have to discard my whole hand. But... At the end of my opponent's end step, they would draw seven cards. So if I have like Notion Thief in play, at the end of my opponent's turn, I would draw 14 cards. And then I would have my entire turn to spend all 14 cards to get Jenga Toxus off the board, for example, or do whatever I wanted um, before I needed to even worry about discarding. And then even if I did discard, I'd draw another 14 off a of Notion Thief. Or with Hall Breacher, they would draw no cards and I would get like seven mana sources, which would still be pretty decent. So I flash out Notion Thief at the end of their turn, of course. And look at this nice little top deck. Dak Fade. My opponent's down to only three cards in hand. So I just hit him, and I'm going to pause right there. Just one of the most beautiful um, interactions in the game. I hit him with Dak Faden, and, and my opponent has to discard two cards, and I draw two cards. So with Dark Confidant, Spellseeker, Tithe, and Notion Thief, Dak Faden, I've already drawn two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, and my opponent's discarded two. So I'm nine cards up. Even though I mulligan to three, down four cards, plus an Enlightened Tutor, down five. So I went down five, but I'm up nine cards. I'm actually four cards ahead in this game off a of mulligan to three that fast. All right, so my opponent's suspend cards are still doing their thing over there. Of course, they had a Counterflux, which is fantastic for me to see that go away. Arcanist the, Ar Ar Arcanist the Impotent, unfortunately, with an Ocean Thief out. So I'm hiding the Hall Breacher as a backup plan. I guess my opponent does something like Bolt, um, you know, Jace or something. And as you can see, I dack away the rest of their hand, and it's just getting completely nuts, right? I'm now drawing four cards per turn off of uh, Dak Fade and Notion Thief combo. So I'm going to go ahead and get to ready down, kill their uh, Greaves there, and uh, get my commander down. I'm one mana short of killing the Joyra, but I don't really kill about, care too much about the Joyra. I just want my commander down so that I have a zero cost deflecting swat and no way for my opponent to attack Dak Faden. So these cards are uh, ticking down here, but look at the... Look at how slow Joyra is. Now, my opponent does suspend this Deep Sea Kraken, which will remove counters whenever I play a card. So I get a clever idea here, I think. Um, this is not what I drew, by the way. So we're going to bug out. But um, before we do, hopefully it'll show what happened here. Does it? Because this is the turn my opponent concedes. All right. So basically, I'll spell it out for you. What I drew was... Uh, Thran Dynamo and yeah, not Mana Leak Skydiver Wheel. Obviously, it would have just wheeled 
potentially right there. But anyway, what I what I did was I drew Thran Dynamo and I muddled a mixture and I don't remember the rest. So I <clears throat> play Thran, oh, and a copy artifact and uh, like a land. So I play Thran Dynamo, which makes Deep Sea Crack and go to three counters. I transmute muddle so it doesn't affect it. I use it to get Demonic Tutor, so a Demonic Tutor goes to two. I, I use a Demonic Tutor to fetch to fairy, three fairy, who uh, forces your opponent to only play cards during... Uh, they can only play spells when they anytime they can play a sorcery. So then I play three fairy, and uh, Deep Sea Kraken drops to one counter, and then I cast like Copy Artifact, and it drops to zero, and my opponent's all excited, and he goes to put it in play, and he stops for a second, and then he realizes... So the... Oh no, what I did was I didn't I didn't cast copy artifact, I didn't have mana. I uh, bounced my own mana crypt and played the mana crypt is what I did. But anyway, so my opponent with the Deep Sea Kraken uh, can't play it because uh, the Therferi prevents your opponent from playing cards except for as a sorcery. And what that means is that every single card in Suspend, if they come off Suspend with that thing in play, my opponent can't play any of them. So at this point in the game, my opponent can't draw any additional cards can't play any counter magic, can't keep any cards in his hands due to the deck Notion Thief interaction. Um, and if they were to actually target my Bray or, you know, one of my Planeswalkers or whatever with like a Lightning Bolt, uh, it gets deflected to their Joyra. And they can't even use their Commander's ability because of the through Fairy. So uh, that, looking at that board state, my opponent scoops. And this crazy bit of what you're seeing right there is a mulligan to three and i just thought that is pretty cool so uh i'll go ahead and i mean obviously like we're gonna yeah game over this is the turn that they concede so just a super cool game um hopefully you enjoyed that i really just thought that was good enough for a video and i i ought to share it of course i did not have lavinia at the time uh in the deck i like i said i had a like I think I mentioned this, that uh, I added this afterwards, but I, I actually really think that Lavinia has some promise. Um, this card, this is a flex slot. You could make it anything. Um, I actually was considering uh, Vanishing Verse, but I kind of want to play around and see how I feel about Lavinia. Had I had Lavinia, I could have, instead of through Fairy, I could have, uh, you know, three Fairy, because he's three mana, right? Like, I'm sure if you haven't heard the slang, now you, now you have. But anyway, um, I could have, uh, I could have, I could have used Lavinia, and then my opponent could not cast a spell without spending mana, which means no suspend work. Suspend doesn't work, um, and that's a that would have been a perfectly reasonable thing to do there as well. But uh, but like I said, I didn't have it at the time, and this guy uh, just gets it done a lot smoother and better anyway. It's just a way more powerful card, so you know I would have targeted that regardless. But anyway, very cool. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Just a quick little game. Uh, for you, and uh, let me know what you think. If you want to see some more of this Brea combo as opposed to the uh, PR control version, it's combo control. Um, let me know uh, if you're completely sick of Brea. I mean, you can also mention that. I I, I do understand, uh, but I, I enjoy it quite a bit, uh, especially when new cards come out. I think it's always fun to go back to these builds and play with things. And, um, and uh, for now, I don't have the time to play enough magic to... Uh, pursue another deck but one one i will say that one commander i have gotten interested in there's a uh, red green blue it's it's basically all four colors except for black and it's the one that um you draw cards when you put additional lands into play you gain life and draw cards depending on how many lands have come into play for the turn so it combos with fetches um that seems like a very interesting commander uh, it's got a lot of what you are looking for it rewards you for ramping it has life gain it has card draw it's a uh, decent size so it'll protect you um interesting card and it produces mana as well because if you put like i think your third land into play you get uh, four you get one mana of of the four commander colors so it makes mana it makes cards it makes life seems really good for a uh, control deck um the only problem of course that i'm having is that uh with something like that is that uh I think right now, unfortunately, Commander is a little bit broken, and the whole Time Twister Wheel of Fortune thing is just way too good. You could easily ban Time Twister and Wheel of Fortune, and it would change almost nothing because there are many, many, many versions of that. I mean, these are the best versions, but you don't need the best version. You just need that effect to go off. 
Um, the real problem, unfortunately, is the alms collector, the the hall breacher, and so forth. It's just really kind of messed up. And uh, the problem with the red, green, blue, uh, white commander is uh, there's no black, so you lose notion thief. You do get alms collector, so you do get three of the cards. Um, but you also lose, you know, demonic, imperial, vampiric, so it's a little bit trickier to uh, pull off. But I still think it'd be interesting and fun to play around with the idea of uh, doing something like that. So that may be something that will come to pass in a future in a future uh, video. But for now, uh, this is all I've got. I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself, and uh, let me tell you, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.